Um, so today we'll be covering calculus, the extension one component of the new syllabus calculus. Um, and hopefully we'll actually finish on time this time. So my name is Amir. Uh, I've been teaching for 10 years. Um, I started two businesses while I was at university, one of them being um, Synergy Education and the other one was Timeweave, uh, which I'll go through in a second. I studied, I finished, I graduated with a master, a bachelor and master's in electrical engineering from UNSW, did a minor in physics, and yes, math and physics are my uh, favorite subjects there. Really fun, I think they're really fun anyway. So Timeweave, Timeweave is actually an app for university students, mostly in Sydney and Melbourne. It automatically imports your timetable. You can add your friends, find common breaks, and yeah, we're actually doing pretty well. So if you like to, if you like startups or are interested in startups, and you can also have a chat to me about that later on as well. Uh, some housekeeping. So we'll be covering the Accenture One component of calculus, not the two unit stuff. There's a lot of two unit stuff. All the all the fundamental stuff uh, that's in two unit, we won't be covering that. Uh, in the interest of time, we're not going to actually like, you know, I'm not actually going to do the questions because, you know, doing math problems takes a long time. But instead, I'll have the answers up and I'll actually just explain the answers as I go. And hopefully that should provide, you know, enough uh, so that you'll be able to do it as well. Uh, if you have time left over, we'll do the introductory section of vectors. Uh, again, like before, the work solutions will be provided at the end. Um, and I'll be going quite fast, assuming that you've covered it in school already. Um, turn off your video at all times. Let me know if, if you know, I suddenly, you can't hear me or, you know, the internet gets weird or you can't see what I'm writing. So, to get people started chatting, uh, I have two questions. Same questions from physics for those who are there in the physics one. What school do you go to and what topic in calculus do you find the hardest? So, write your answers in the chat. I'll, uh, have a read. It'll be good. It's good to me. Uh, it's good for me, so I can see who's kind of like looking to be really engaged, because then I can like name them as well when uh, we go through some of the questions. Anybody? Chat? No. What school do you go to? Can anybody hear me? Hello. Is my internet lagging? Differentials is the hardest. Yeah, differentials is um is new, is a new it's not in the old syllabus. Most of the other things were in the old syllabus, but differential equations is new. So that makes sense that it's the hardest because um there is not much content out there. Actually if you if you have any friends or know anyone that does first year university, um the first year university textbook covers differential stuff really quite well. Thankfully we're only doing first order differentials in the HSE, otherwise it would get a lot more complicated. You'll have to do differentials in in university, which gets uh, really bad, really fast. Anybody else want to say what school they go to? No, seriously, are we are we not going to have anybody? We have twenty people here. Nobody nobody has access to a keyboard. Inverse tree integration, excellent. We're going to be starting with that. Thank you, Lily and Nathaniel. Um, I might be picking on you too to to answer questions as we go along, so that I'm not super bored. But I really appreciate your uh, messages. <coughs> What school do you go to, Lily? I don't know. I don't know if you told me in the physics seminar, but uh, it'd be good to know. No. Okay, I tried. I tried. It might. It might be me talking to myself. For oh, Winona, that sounds cool. I don't even know where that is. That sounds far. Is that far? Yeah, high school. It is. Oh, North Sydney, not far at all. Okay, I thought that sounded like a rural place. All right, let's get started. So, um, this is the stuff that we'll be covering today. Um, integration by substitution, sine squared, cos squared, um, inverse trig, areas and volumes by solids of revolutions, and then differential equations. Cool. So, um, let's get started. Does anybody remember what the antiderivative for sec squared is? Antiderivative for sec squared. We have the formula sheet up here. Anybody? Antiderivative for sec squared? Can they find it? No. 
No. Okay. The antiderivative for sec squared is 10. If we look at our formula sheet, it's actually here. Uh, the integral of sec squared is 10. Now you can see they've only give us, given us sec, they actually haven't given us cosec because there's actually a trick for complementary integrals. And the trick is all you have to do is complement everything and put a minus sign in the end. So what I mean by that is, let's see if this, uh, this thing will work. Yeah, 10x, nice. Um, if you think about the integral of cos, it's equal to sine, right? So now if we, if we complement uh, these things, so if the complementary of something that's already complemented is just sine. So cos is, remember, short for cosine. So if we complement this, we end up with sine, and the complement of sine is actually cos, and then all you have to do is actually put a minus sign. So if you know uh, sec squared, you know sec squared is 10, then you can actually complement this and complement this, so that means cosec squared is actually equal to co tan, which is which is cot, um, and then just put the minus sign. So this is actually something that's not explicitly stated in the syllabus, but you're actually expected to know this. They they've given you the first one to use as an example, sine and cos, and then they want you to figure out all the rest uh, on your own. So just be aware if you're integrating or differentiating, you can complement both things and uh, put a minus sign. So yes, the antiderivative of cosec is also uh, minus cot. Uh, which we've, yeah. Then there's the integrals of uh, tan and cot. So the integrals of, sorry, uh, powers of tan and cot. So the integral of, actually, does anybody remember the integral of just tan? Does anybody remember the integral of just tan? Before we get into tan squared, just a quick recap. Anybody know how to solve this? I don't know if you've learnt exponentials and logs yet, but I, th I feel like you should have. Um, so just remember, tan is sine over cos, and the derivative of cos is actually minus sine, right? So we need the derivative uh, to be up there. So because there's no minus at the top, we're going to put a minus in there, and then put a minus up the front here. Um, and now we have the derivative at the top. So uh, now Remember, if the derivative is at the top of a function and of the function that's below, we end up just with log. So it actually ends up being just uh, log cos x. Nice. Yeah, um, I think you missed this minus sign. Unless I made a silly mistake, I feel like there's a minus. The derivative of cos is minus sign. Yeah, so there should be a minus sign in front of your answer. And actually, if you remember, if you remember your log laws, this is the same thing as uh, ln cos x to the power of minus one. So that's actually the same thing as ln uh, sec, ln sec x, so it's pretty interesting. The, the integral of tan is actually ln sec x, so be aware of that. But uh, before we get into that, uh, I'm not going to go too much into that, we're going to go into tan squared. So we want to use the identities to figure out the integral of tan squared, so we convert it into sec squared minus 1. So some people have trouble remembering this, but I have a, I have a sneaky way of remembering it as well. Um, it's one person with a tan is sexy. So that's kind of how I remember it. And uh, what you can do is just co, you can do the co everything again and you actually get uh, cot because the co version, the complement version of tan is cot and the co version of sec is, is cosec. So uh, if, you, if you ever have trouble forgetting those, that's that as well. So you use that and we know how to integrate sec so we, we put sec squared in here. And you can see the integral of sec squared is tan x, and minus 1 makes uh, minus x, and then the plus c. Cool. So to do sine squared and cos squared, we need the double angle expressions, um, which we're going to convert into this. So hopefully everybody remembers that. If not, I'll do them real quick. Um, I like to start with cos 2x is equal to uh, cos squared x minus uh, sine squared x. Now, if you if you remember your expansion, we can actually uh, do this, but I have it done for me already, so I'll just pull that up. Um, you can convert the cos or the sine um, depending on which form you want, and when you do that, uh, in this case for sine, we can convert it as 1 minus 2 sine squared x, 
or in terms of cos, it's 2 cos squared x minus 1. So we make sine squared or cos squared the subject in this case, and we end up with half 1 minus cos 2x or half 1 plus cos 2x. So the only difference between these is actually just the minus sign. So uh, be careful, be careful with that. Cool. That means the integral of sine squared is actually just, uh, you just replace it with half 1 minus cos 2x. Uh, remember, half is a constant, so you can actually take it out of the integral. It's always really important to factor out all the constants uh, when you can in calculus, because it'll make your, your math simpler. Uh, the integral of 1 is then x, and the integral of cos 2x is then sine 2x over 2. So when you do the over 2 and combine it with the half that's here, you end up with over 4. Um, in this case, we have an n, so you know 2n at the bottom, which would give us 4n when we expand it with this half. Same thing with cos squared except for that plus instead. So we can do, we can find the answers to these quite quickly, sine squared x. Um, again, I literally just went through sine squared x. Uh, I have heard of a baby in a cot is cozy, but the, the reason I don't like that is because um, I don't want people to confuse cozy with, with cos, right? So cozy is, is cos, but it's actually meant to be cosec. So I don't, Want to one one baby in a cot is equal to is equal to cosec, uh, not cos. So I actually I actually like doing the the tan. Oh, it's easier to remember one person in the tan is sexy anyway, and then just complement those two. I, I mean personally I find that easier. Um, all right, cos squared two x. Um, same thing. This time we have a number in here. Uh, this time we have a plus. So be careful. We have the half plus half cos four x. Um, actually, that's a typo. No, no. So you remember to double double the angle. That's a common silly mistake. People forget to double double the angle when you're integrating because it actually it actually doubles. Um, so if we have sine x here, we actually turn into cos two x. If we have cos two x here, it turns into cos four x, and so on. What about cos to the power of four? Cos to the power of four. We don't know how to do cos to the power of four. We only know how to do cos squared. So what we do is we do cos squared and just square it. So we write what we know for cos squared and we square it. And then we just expand. Expand like how we normally expand things. Um, and you end up with uh, half cos 2x, which is everybody should know how to integrate. That should just be sine 2x over 2. Um, and cos squared. So this is the original the original one. This time there's a, there's a quarter in the front. Um, cool. And then hopefully you guys can just... Uh, you know, same same principle applied for this cos squared 2x here. Just be careful, make sure you, you factor out your uh, uh, constants when you can to make life easier. Um, some more practice questions, a quarter. So a quarter, you put a quarter at the bottom, which ends up putting a two at the top. Uh, sorry, a four at the top. Um, so we can see the half actually disappeared because when you do half, times 2, well we have to double the angle first, so you double the angle, you get x over 2, and you put the 2 at the top, it actually removes that half. Uh, 6x, I guess we've, we've done that enough. This one, this one looks a little bit more complicated. Um, without looking at the answers, does anybody know what the first step would be? For this fractional, this fractional... Uh, You can actually just divide it. If there's only one thing at the bottom of a fraction, you can actually just divide it. So we end up with 1 over sine squared x, which hopefully you guys remember is the same thing as cosec, cosec, 1 over cosec, oh, sorry, cosec squared, plus, and then sine cubed over sine squared is going to be just sine. So we can see that here, uh, 1 over sine squared is cosec squared. And the integral of cosec squared, we remember, is uh, minus cot, minus cot x, uh, and then we have minus cos from the positive sign that we got from this. Tan cubed x, this one's a little bit tricky. Tan cubed x, we actually want to split it up. We want to split it up into, um, we want one of the tans to be in there, and we want the other one to, we want the tan squared to, to be changed into sec squared minus 1. Uh, and the reason for that is, when we expand this out, we can actually see sec squared tan x. And remember, sec squared is the derivative of tan x. So that's, if you think about a substitution where u is equal to tan x, the derivative is actually sec squared. So we end up with um, tan squared x over 2, kind of like u squared over 2, just a simple 
you know, u equals tan x here. And then the integral of just tan x we know as uh, ln, ln cos x. Uh, because there was a, remember when we did tan x, it was a minus ln cos x. There's a minus here, so now it would become a plus, plus ln cos x. Did everybody understand that? Let me know if, if that was uh, confusing. This is actually quite a common question that comes up in, in like, you know, question one of your exam. So let me know if I, if I need to go through that again. All right, if y dash is equal to sine squared plus sine squared and y is equal to 1, x is equal to 1, find y when x is equal to pi and 4. So all we want to do is integrate this again, the integral of sine squared. Again, we use the same method as we did before. Hopefully you guys should practice this. You should be able to do it, practice it enough until you can actually do it without pen and paper. If you can do it in your head, that's when you know you've practiced it enough. And 10 squared and the integral of 10 squared, we have to convert to sec squared. So we just do that. We end up with this as our y. We have a plus c and we use the initial conditions um, to figure out what that c is. So when x is 0, y is 1, so you sub in x is equal to 0, that disappears, that disappears. Uh, tan 0 also disappears. All of this disappears. y is equal to 1, that means c must be 1. Um, and then we can just sub in pi on 4 into uh, y once you've done that. And type that in your calculator and you should get uh, that answer. Cool, we have a challenge question here. Integrate, um, actually, it's, I don't think, I personally don't think it's too difficult. One on r sine squared from zero to r, limit as r goes to infinity. So we just uh, solve this how we normally would, uh, ignoring this limit sign. We solve it how we normally we would, um, kind of ignore this limit sign. We have uh, half r, we leave the r in there. Uh, 1 minus cos 2 using the double angle result, then we integrate it with respect to t, so we have t, uh, we integrate it, um, we, what happened here, yeah, this is where the integration happened, we subbed in r and 0 and did the subtraction, um, and then now this is where we multi expand this bracket, we expand this bracket out and we end up with this result, and now we sub r is equal to infinity. So r is equal to infinity if r is at the bottom of a function, of a sine function. Remember, sine only oscillates between 1, 1 and minus 1. So this value, no matter what you put in for r, is actually always going to be between 1 and minus 1. So if you divide it by a really large number, it will actually make this go to 0 because we're dividing by infinity. 1 over a really large number is 0. So the answer just being, becomes a half. We have a half minus a, a 0 here.